There's often a debate in basketball today over whether players should be able to head to the NBA and get paid right after high school. Now, whichever side of the issue that you fall on, you can take something away from the case of Sebastian Telfair. Once a highly touted recruit and a surefire star as a point guard in high school, Telfair never got his feet established in the NBA and eventually faded out. So what really happened to Sebastian Telfair? And why didn't his high school stardom translate to the league? The answer might change the way you think about the high school to pro issue. Welcome back to the channel for all things pro sports. Stay locked in right here to get all the details. Sebastian Telfair first entered the basketball world as a superstar high school player in the New York City area. Playing for Abraham Lincoln High School in the Coney Island area of Brooklyn, he was a flashy point guard who used speed, creativity, and confidence to will his team to victory. Telfair was even dubbed the King of Coney Island, and he was featured on a Slam magazine cover with then fellow high schooler and future NBA superstar LeBron James. With the headline, Sebastian Telfair and LeBron James are about to rule the world. Imagine that. Now, no doubt there were many people throughout New York City and the greater basketball world who needed no help imagining Telfair as an NBA superstar. Much like modern day high school phenoms like LaMelo Ball and Bronny James, Telfair's Lincoln High games attracted athletes and celebrities like Derek Jeter, Jay Z, and they weren't the only ones watching. College coaches were very excited at the prospect of adding Telfair to their teams and growing his talent more. He was ranked as the sixth best player in the recruiting class nationwide and as the second best point guard in the class. Telfair was heavily linked to Louisville during the recruiting cycle and even committed to play for head coach Rick Pitino. Now, during his high school career, Telfair was a prolific scorer, especially around the rim as a finisher despite his small size. He was listed at only 6 feet tall and 180 pounds. In fact, he ended up leaving Abraham Lincoln High School as New York State's all-time leading scorer, with 2,785 points in his career. The Lincoln Rail Splitters even won a state title with Telfair, who averaged 33.2 points and 9.2 assists in his senior season en route to the title. He was also a finalist for the Naismith Award following his senior year, though he lost out to a future NBA star and number one overall pick in Dwight Howard. However, Telfair was still very highly regarded for his play on the court and his NBA bloodlines with his cousin Stephon Marbury, who was already playing well in the league, seemed to bode well for Telfair's future success. Telfair was due to attend Louisville University in the fall of 2004 to begin his collegiate career. However, everything changed for the young point guard when tragedy struck in his apartment building. While Telfair was living in the notorious Surfside Gardens project in Coney Island, two of his friends were shot and killed in the elevator of the building. Believing that he might lose his chance to earn life-changing money for both him and his family, Telfair changed his mind and decided to enter the NBA draft directly instead of going to Louisville. He immediately signed a multi-year shoe and apparel contract with Adidas, which would pay him $10 million over five years. This reward seemed to be the immediate payoff that Telfair wanted, but he would need his play on the court to back his decision up once he reached the NBA. At only six feet tall, Telfair was the shortest player ever selected directly from high school when the Portland Trailblazers selected him with a lottery pick in the 2004 NBA Draft. Drafted at 13th overall, Telfair was hardly expected to change the franchise like a top five pick could have. However, Portland no doubt believed that the young guard's speed and creativity could fill a starting role in helping the team to become playoff contenders. Telfair's NBA career started off slowly. Now competing in a league filled with big, fast players, he was unable to use the same tactics that he had in high school to easily score around the rim and had to rely more on shots from around the perimeter. And it's safe to say that didn't go very well. Telfair shot 24.6% from three-point range in his first year and was similarly bad overall from the field, shooting only 39.3%. Now, with that being said, Telfair was still able to start some games down the stretch for the Blazers. In just under 20 minutes per game, he averaged 6.8 points and 3.3 assists from the point guard position. Numbers that seemed to suggest he was more effective as a distributor and an opportunistic scorer in the NBA. Although he was no longer the king of Coney Island putting up 30 points a game, it looked like he could still be an effective NBA player with some more growth. Now, One main thing that inhibited this growth was that Telfair's defensive ability was essentially non-existent. So the only thing that the Blazers really could rely on going into his second season was his passing. 
and that was only for short periods per game. Portland fans and team officials alike understandably wanted to see some growth from him as a shooter. Otherwise, he might not be the NBA starter that he was expected to be as a lottery pick. Telfair showed some slight signs of improvement over his second season. His three-point shooting percentage went up to 35.2%, and as a result of this, in about five more minutes per game, he was able to average 9.5 points per game. However, this scoring output is still relatively low for a starting point guard, and his lack of defensive ability shone even more light on this fact. Portland fans and executives had already lost their patience with the young guard and decided it was time for a change. Telfair was traded to the Boston Celtics in June of 2006 in a deal that ultimately brought Brandon Roy to the Blazers. With the Celtics, Telfair regressed. Despite starting 30 games, his scoring numbers dipped down to 6.1 points per game. His assist numbers and efficiency dropped as well. After just one season, he was no longer welcome in Boston, but it wasn't just because of his on-court play. Off the court, Telfair was the subject of several headlines. The most damaging one was an April of 2007 arrest in New York City. While doing 77 miles per hour in a 45 mile per hour zone in his Range Rover, Telfair was pulled over by police. Ultimately, it was found that he had a suspended Florida license. Already going to see a hefty fine at least, police searched Telfair's vehicle and found a loaded handgun under the front seat of his car. As a result of this incident, Telfair was charged with criminal possession of a weapon in addition to the traffic charges. He received three years probation and was also suspended by the NBA for three games in the 2008-2009 season. After Boston, Telfair was traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves as a part of the Kevin Garnett trade. In Minnesota, he found his most consistent NBA role. For the next two years, he was a main starter for the T-Wolves at the point guard position, showing skills as a distributor and an inside scorer when needed. In 2007-2008, his best season as a pro, he averaged 9.3 points, 5.9 assists, and 2.3 rebounds per game. But still, Telfair's production was more consistent with that of a reserve player, especially considering his defensive ineptitude. Again, Telfair was traded in the 2009 offseason, this time to the Los Angeles Clippers. The Clippers would deal him to the Cleveland Cavaliers at the 2010 trade deadline after less than a full season with the team. In the 2010 offseason, he was then traded back to the Timberwolves. Now, this is definitely a lot of instability for a young player and likely didn't help Telfair to grow confident as an NBA player. However, his play regressed again from his decent numbers in his first stint with Minnesota, and it just wasn't feasible for any of these teams to keep him around. For the rest of his career, Telfair would be only a bench player. With his NBA career already winding down, Telfair played a limited role for the Phoenix Suns for the next two seasons, and then had two final seasons partially spent in Toronto and Oklahoma City, respectively. Telfair's NBA career was already over, only at age 30. Since his career ended though, Telfair has found plenty of off-court action. He was arrested in June of 2017 following another traffic stop in Brooklyn. This time, officers found bagged marijuana, four loaded guns, and tactical gear. Arrested again this time, Telfair had to wait nearly two years for a trial. However, when the time came, he was found guilty of felonious weapons possession. In April 2019, Telfair started a three and a half year prison sentence. However, the sad story doesn't end there. In 2021, Telfair was connected to a healthcare fraud scheme run by several other NBA players. The players were found by the FBI to have engaged in a ploy in which they pocketed money distributed for supposed medical expenses despite already being multimillionaires from their basketball careers. Telfair was a part of this having used false chiropractor bills to get money from the league. As of early 2022, the case is still ongoing. So what happened to Sebastian Telfair? Well, it appears to be a case of too much hype and a player not being ready for the bright lights of the league. Despite all the attention that he received in high school, Telfair was simply not ready for the NBA when he joined up, despite the fact that he had hung around for several seasons as a mediocre player. It remains to be seen if his career would have gone differently had he remained committed to Louisville, but his financial needs obviously were a main factor in his NBA decision. But in all honesty, did the money really change things for Telfair? While he was able to get out of the projects and have a multi-year NBA career, he still ended up in debt following the end of his time in the league. More than that, his 2017 arrest and subsequent prison sentence came right near the projects where he grew up, showing that maybe he never did truly get out. 
Sebastian Telfair's story is an interesting one, but a more common scenario than it may seem. In the end, the NBA is just a tough transition for most players, let alone an undersized guard who struggles with defense and his outside shot. It's fair to say that the deck was stacked against him, no matter what he had done to prepare himself for the league. What do you think about Sebastian Telfair? Do you think he would have had a better NBA career if he had gone to Louisville as he originally planned? Be sure to leave us a comment, like, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications so you can see all of our latest NBA content as soon as it drops. We'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.